the most, the most, one of the most common Amazon. All right. All right, what's going on, adventurers? Charlie's Adventures right here, and today we're going to be covering one of the most common inflatable paddle boards bought on Amazon, and that is the ROC paddle board, which is right behind me. So I was very excited to get my hands on this, as this board has over 7,500 reviews, and ROC is an American brand, and it has sold over 500,000 boards. So uh, this is one of the more popular board reviews that I've done. So I'm really excited to cover this board for you guys and you guys all the in, ins and outs and all the pros and cons. I'm really excited just to check it out with you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get right into that. All right, so now what we're gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna cover the pros and cons of this ROC Scout board that has over 9,000 reviews and the brand has been in business for over 23 years. So first, we're gonna cover the pros. Number one is that it's super affordable, which is very nice. This board is on sale right now on Amazon, I believe, for only 280 bucks, which is an absolutely insane deal. So. If you wanna go check this board out, the link will be in the description, the top link. Make sure you click on that and go check out the, the board on Amazon. So my number two uh, pro is that it's super lightweight. At only being 18 pounds, that is, that's basically nothing when it comes to something this size right here. You know, when I had it on my back earlier, hiking down here, I barely even felt it on my back. It felt like nothing was out or on my back. So if you're worried about weight, don't worry about it with this one. So number three pro, is that it has a very playful design. It's kind of meant for everyone, it's very neutral. So you, everyone can get down with this design right here. So I kind of, the, the color scheme right here is a little bit more off the beaten path for uh, ROC. They're usually a lot more, you know, the what everyone likes sort of path. So the next pro that we have is that it comes with a very capable paddle. I'll be getting into this a little bit more in our equipment review right here, but you know, other than that, it comes with absolutely everything you need to get going on your paddleboard. So now for the cons. My number one con right here is that if you want to go fast in this, you just need to get a different board. Because this ROC paddleboard is not meant for speed. You know, this is meant for the beginner, which is most worried about stability. So you're not going to be going on any races with this paddleboard right here. So next is that this paddleboard does not do the best in rougher conditions. So the water behind me right here, absolutely perfect. This is like almost just about glass right here. So it would do great out there. It would do great in some very like calm rivers and just any sort of flat water. This board is like definitely perfect. Now it can handle some waves, but the problem is gonna be tracking. It's not gonna hold a line at all. So. Other than that, the only other thing I could think of that like kind of really concerns me is that this board only comes with a one year manufacturer warranty, which is kind of like, that's, I mean, that's only one year. So that kind of concerns me a little bit that the brand only covers this board for one year because a lot of other brands are covering it for three, five, and some even seven. So hopefully this board lasts a long time and I don't have to worry about that. That's just something in the past. But that's something to keep in mind when you're buying a paddleboard is a manufacturer warranty. So that kind of sums up my pros and cons. So All right, so now we're gonna get into the, to the specifics of this paddleboard right here. So the first thing I wanna tell you guys is what it is. It's an ROC 10 foot Scout Desert paddleboard. So their Scout models is their most, uh, or the, is their most common paddleboards that they sell. And this is one of their newer color designs, which is the desert design. So most commonly you'll see the ones with the orange deck pad and the blue stripes or the blue design. And that's one of their most common ones, but this is one of their newer colored designs. So now, like I said before, it's 10 foot long, which is officially the shortest paddleboard I've had to deal with, to do a review over. So I'm really excited to see how well it does in the water behind me. So number two, it is 32 inches wide, which is great. That's a great beginner size right there. So if you're kind of worried about it, 32 inches, it just kind of means the wider the better if you're kind of beginner and you just have more stability. It is six inches deep, which is great. That's kind of the standard for paddle boards right now. You'll find a couple brands doing five inch paddle or five inch five inches depth, which I personally don't like. You can go check out my Body Glove Dynamo review. They have a five inch board. I just found a lot of problems with that and I just didn't like how it did in the water. So 
The next thing is this board is one of the lightest boards I've had. It's only 18 pounds, which is pretty insane. Because one of the new paddle boards, I'm not going to tell you what, it's, in, it's coming in the mail for me right now, it weighs 27 pounds. So that's a, quite a big difference. So it's super light. You don't have to worry about it being super heavy. It's easy to carry around and take from the car all the way down to the beach. And we probably walked about half a mile to get here. It felt like nothing on my back. So number two, it's rated up for 350 pounds, which is absolutely plenty of weight. This isn't really like a two-person board, but you could probably fit two people on it. But more than likely, just a person and a dog is probably about enough. I wouldn't recommend putting two people on this board. But you got plenty of bungee space up here for all your gear and plenty of space for you. So 350 pound weight limit should be absolutely fine. So the next thing is all rolled up. It fits super nicely in the bag. It's only about 32 inches wide by 10 inches deep in the bag. So it's just a really nice, uh, it folds up really nicely basically. And you don't have to worry about it squeezing in the bag. So the next thing I want to talk about is its construction. So on the ROC website, it specifically, specifically says military grade PVC. Well, I hate to break it to you. There's no mil spec for this PVC right here. There's no military grade standards. That's just a term that the paddleboard industry brought up and a lot of people's been doing it. So if you don't see a board that says military grade PVC, don't worry, it's probably just about as durable as this one. So, but this one is specifically built with the Durawell technology. I tried to do my research for that, but it seems like ROC is one of three paddle boards that do it. Uh, from my research, I couldn't really find a whole lot about it, but it basically is how's it, how it is constructed and adheres. So you'll see the side rail over here. It's kind of like how that's constructed together. Obviously, or not obviously, but it's built from a PVC material, material with drop stitching, and that's how you're able to get the super high uh, PSIs in these inflatable paddle boards. So one of the other things I really like about this board is the side rail. So you'll see the gray part right here at the bottom. That's what you call a side rail or side wall. What, the, what ROC or Rock Paddleboard did was they did a triple layer side rail, which is pretty awesome. So this thing could take an absolute beating. So I'm really happy about that because I'm usually in a river and it's lots of rocks and all of that. So. Other than that, the only other thing I wanted to mention is the deck pad right here. All this green and reddish brown color you see is an EVA non-slip deck pad. So that just really helps when you're out there in the water. I usually just have my bare feet right on there and it grips just fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over all of the gear that it comes with. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is get into all the equipment that your ROC paddleboard comes with. The first thing I'm going to go over is your aluminum paddleboard paddle right here, which is a very mediocre paddleboard. All your cheap budget paddleboards are most likely gonna come with the aluminum paddleboard, or aluminum paddle. So nothing real fancy about this. It's a three-piece paddle. So you got a push pin right here that comes apart. And then where you adjust it up here, you adjust this for your height. And what I would recommend if this is a new board for you, Put the paddle right next to you and have your arm slightly bent and that's about where you want your paddle to be. But luckily, this comes with measurements of where you need to be at. But if your paddle doesn't come with measurements, like I said, you want your arm slightly bent and that's where you're, that's what you kind of want your height to be at. So the only major cons of an aluminum paddle is number one, it's slightly more heavier than your like hybrids or your uh, carbon fiber. But the other, only other big con is that these can bend. So if you're kind of really ripping into the water, the paddle, the paddle can bend right here, which can ultimately end in you not be able to put this end back into the paddle right here. But more than likely, you're not gonna run into that problem, and this is gonna be more than enough for you. So our next item right here is gonna be your high pressure air valve. This is a single action hand pump. Once again, nothing really fancy about this. The only thing I don't like is that it is single action. A lot of the paddle boards I've gotten that are budget, you know, just shy of $200, they still come with dual action. So I was kind of disappointed to see that this was only a single action uh, hand pump. So nothing really big with that, but it's just gonna be your first part of pumping up your boards. It's gonna take a little bit longer with a single action but single actions are a little bit better when you're coming into the later half you're pumping up your board when you're getting in the 10 to 15 PSI because that's when it starts getting really hard. But 
this is more than enough uh, hand pump for anybody. So now what we're gonna do with the paddleboard right here is we're gonna fully inflate it and see exactly how long it takes to fully inflate. So one of the things I wanna talk about before we put the pump on and start pumping it up is you need to make sure on your air valve that you have the pin up. So when you're not, that just kind of make sure when you untwist it and let go of the pump right here, no air leaks out. So that's one of the first things you always want to check is to make sure that valve is up because if it's down and it leaks all your air out, you're going to end up wasting a couple minutes of your time. And trust me, you don't want to have to repump this bad boy up. So all you do is with your dual action pump right here is stick this end down into the air valve. And then you just start, a, start getting at it. So I'm gonna time this and let you guys know exactly how long it takes to pump it up to 15 PSI, which is the recommended PSI for this paddleboard. So I got my stopwatch right here. And we're go, going, here we go. Of course it's a squeaky one. Yeah. 15. Woo! All right. As now I'm dripping in sweat, I had pumped this ROC paddle board up to 15 PSI in a constant six minutes and 30 seconds. So if you're gonna be taking breaks in between, just assume it's gonna take about 10 minutes. But really quickly before we get into anything else, I do wanna say I would recommend getting an electric pump if you're gonna be really getting into paddle boarding because I have one, but of course I wanted to let you guys know how long this takes to pump up by the pump they provide. And sometimes I like to pump it up by the, the hand pumps to just humble myself. But I'm gonna have the link to electric pump I use. It's only 80 bucks. It's gonna be one of the cheaper electric pumps that you can find for paddle boards on Amazon. So that link's gonna be down in the description. So make sure you check that out. So now all you do, once you got pumped up, is you untwist and you're relieved that you put the pin up because if not all the air would have just came out and you probably would have lost about three psi so now that we got all this inflated and covered up we're gonna get on to everything else uh. so our next item on the list is going to be your detachable center fin right here so I believe this is a eight inch or nine inch fin right here it's a plastic fin I'm really not a fan of those. I prefer like nylon or they have glass filled or there's just a lot of better options than this. But more than likely, this would be enough for you as long as you're not in shallow rivers. You don't have to worry about this thing breaking. And that's the only thing I don't like about this uh, fin right here is that it can break really easily. Now it does have an easy clip in design, which I've had a lot of success with this design. They never come unclipped. But you know, this is just a really standard uh, fin right here. It's gonna it's pretty good for what you get for the money. And going on, we have our air valve tightening tool. This is something that you might come across or you, you know, kind of looks like a window crank or something funky like that. Trust me, this is a tool you might need. So at this end or the back end of your paddle board, you do have your air valve. That's kind of where you pump the air in. Sometimes you might hear an air leak from that. Don't get scared. All you need to do is grab this tool, stick it in there, and start turning righty tighty, and you'll fix your problem. So it's, it's not a big deal at all. It's a really handy tool. And now we have our little tiny dry bag right here. This is actually the smallest dry bag I have ever received with my with the paddleboard uh, purchase. So nothing bad about that, I guess, but you know this is plenty enough to hold your phone, your wallet, your keys, depending on what you might need out there in the water. I don't know what you're doing, but this is just a really uh, small design, but it comes with the dry bag, so that's awesome enough. So it's got the ROC logo right here. So, like I said, plenty enough space for anybody. And now we have one of the most important things that this board comes with for safety. It's gonna be your coil ankle leash. And what you do with this, is you have a D-ring all the way at this back end of the board. You take the Velcro in, loop it around the D-ring, and you take this end with the ROC branding logo, and you wrap that around your ankle. 
So I'll cover that once we get out on the water. But so now that we've covered all of that and all the equipment it comes with, we're gonna get into all of the performance factors of this board. And we're gonna cover that out on the water. All right, so now we're gonna be taking this paddle board out on the water. I'm gonna be sticking to the shallow water, which shouldn't really be a problem. But one of the first things I wanna go over is your ankle leash right here. So like I said, this end will unvelcro. And all you do is you come all the way down here to the, to the tail of the paddle board, stick the Velcro through, and just re-Velcro it to your strap. And then obviously you'll probably wanna mount your board first or just put your ankle leash on while you're in shallow water. But on this side, same deal. You have a Velcro design and you Velcro that around, around your ankle. So that's how you do that. Don't have my paddle adjusted, but we'll cover, or I'll do that real quick. So once you do that, you have a couple different ways of getting on your paddle board if you're kind of starting out. You know, you kind of have the luxury at a beach to kind of mount your paddle in, or your paddle board in shallow water. But you know, all you want to do is have your paddle at the front. You want to start out on your knees and have both your hands on your paddle. I'm starting to fly away right now. So I'll kind of center myself. But all you do is you put your hands right here for stability, one leg up, next leg up, and you stand up. So that's kind of how you get standing up on your paddle board. All right, so one of the first performance factors I wanted to cover of this board was the stability. So this is an extremely white, lightweight design, which really doesn't help with its stability, but that's offset by its 10 foot length and 32 inches wide. Uh, you know, setup right here, which really helps with stability. Also has a rounded nose and a rounded tail. So those, are the front's also rockered, and all of that combined makes this a really stable board. Like, I don't have a problem on this board at all right now, but like I said, this is flat water. It's one of the easiest conditions you'll be on on your paddle board. So the next category is gonna be your tracking. So the same rounded rocker nose, lightweight design and all of that might help with the stability but with tracking this thing does not do well because of those factors so it does all right in flat water but in rougher conditions you're not going to hold a line at all you know you really want a pointed nose if you're worried about tracking so tracking on this board probably about a two out of ten while the maneuver or the stability is about a seven out of ten so one of the best things the best factors of this board is its maneuverability. So 10 foot's pretty short for this paddle board right here, which makes it perfect for turning on a dime. So that's one of the categories that a rock paddle board does amazingly. So, you know, like I said, this thing can move pretty easily. So what I'm gonna do just really quickly is go out here on the paddle board, test it out a little bit more, do a couple of uh, spins on it and whatnot, hopefully not falling too deep but just kind of give you guys a more visual effect of what it looks like. Can you see me all right? All right, so one of the things that's gonna help you while you're turning in is if you step back to the back end of your paddle board, and then you end up doing a more of a pivot turn. It's kind of lets you just turn on zero degree turns. You know, that's like right on dime right here. And that's once you kind of work on your stability. But another thing that really helps with turning is paddling in the opposite direction is gonna help you turn really easily as well. So now you might notice when I'm paddling right here, I'm not keeping the line at all. And that's because I don't have the eight inch detachable fin on here, which I would recommend if you're in a body of water like this lake. So lastly, the last things I want to cover before we end this awesome review is who is this paddleboard meant for? And that is a beginner. So a beginner with the budget on their mind. Because personally, 
I think if you're in the $600 range, you could buy a lot better board. But if you can really only afford 300 bucks, this is the best bang for your buck for a USA brand that's really gonna have a lot of support behind it. So, you know, if you're a beginner, you're gonna be getting into flat water, this board's meant for you. So next, would I recommend this board? And it depends. I recommend it if you're a beginner with a budget, but I wouldn't recommend it if you're gonna be doing a lot of river or uh, white water or touring or anything like that, because this board's just not the best option for you. But like I said, if you're a beginner and you're on a budget, go ahead and grab this board. And it's on sale right now for 280 bucks on Amazon. The price might have changed. But as of right now, that's what the price is. So if you want to grab this board on Amazon, there's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that and go check out the board. But if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching my review right here. And it would help me a lot if you liked and subscribed to the video right here. So I plan on doing a lot more paddleboard reviews. And if you have any that you want me to review, just go ahead and drop it down in the description. I'm kind of addicted, so I plan on getting a whole lot more. So other than that, make sure you go check out all of my other content and make sure you have a wonderful time on your next adventure with your ROC paddleboard. See you guys in the next video.